What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mr. Hurricane with more Madden 18 content today. I've gotten a few more games in and have more impressions for you today. And this video will focus on all pro difficulty in franchise mode and how I think the game is playing. And I'll lead by saying that this was the most enjoyable gameplay I've had in Madden 18 when it comes to playing against the computer. I had the All Madden video yesterday, I played the initial game and play now All Pro Vikings Packers, but none of them come close to the gameplay that you're going to see in these games that I have cut up. This is All Pro defaults, no changes whatsoever to the sliders or even the settings. I just left them where they are to see how default All Pro plays. In theory, All Pro difficulty with simulation game style should give us the most balanced ratings based gameplay that we can get. And there were a number of good moments I thought in this gameplay, including this, a drop by rookie Taiwan Taylor. His catching is only an 82, so you should see drops here and there with him. And I also noticed the CPU utilizing some moves here, and that's the elusive Cordero Patterson unleashing a couple spin moves. Overall, with this All Pro difficulty, from what I've played so far, I'm actually quite impressed. I feel like it's a lot more balanced than it's been in the past, and the CPU can get their big plays and put up a fight against you. Now, one thing I have noticed is quarterbacks with running backs near them in the pocket a lot of times have some really bad accuracy, and that's kind of what you saw there with Derek Carr. Not sure if Marshawn Lynch being there next to him caused that to happen. Here's a nice throw by Marcus Mariota downfield to Eric Decker. Both myself and the CPU were able to hit a lot of big plays in the passing game. And here was the highlight of the running game as DeMarco Murray keeps his footing and races past defenders to the end zone. I was really concerned that on all pro difficulty, the run game would be too easy. And this was the highlight of this session, but it was only one of maybe two 20 plus yard runs. I actually thought the CPU run defense played well, and when you see the Dolphins gameplay, you'll notice that Dominican Sue really stands out, and a player of his caliber should. Now the CPU, they passed the ball way better than I expected, and their tendencies were definitely shifted more towards getting bigger plays. I feel like the CPU has been too conservative in the past, but they really wanted to stretch the field, especially in this Raiders game, a team that oftentimes throws screen passes and whatnot. I kind of thought we'd see more of that, but Derek Carr was stretching the field a lot more than I anticipated. I'm not sure exactly why there were so many deep shots, but there were. CPU run game on the other hand, in all these games you're not going to be impressed with what they were able to do. I felt like my defenders were able to shed blocks rather easily, and the opposing running backs weren't getting many yards after contact. I like to see a larger sample size, but it also seemed like they weren't utilizing their moves very much. But we saw Cordero use his, he's obviously an elite elusive player. So I'll pay attention to that as I continue playing on All Pro. One thing I'm going to do when I get my hands on the full release version of the game is I'm going to start my first streaming series, which will be a fantasy franchise. I don't think I'll have any interesting draft conditions, like I had the drafting out of a hat a handful of months ago for a series. I might just draft the team normal, but I wanted to just have a fun series to play, and it'll be on All Pro Simulation, and I'll continue seeing how balanced I think the game is, because All Pro is impressing me. Now, I don't think I'll be doing my full franchise on All Pro this year, but I'm going to continue playing it and offering up any feedback I can as to how simulation is playing or if the game can be balanced better than it is. Here's one example of quarterback inaccuracy, and I don't like how much Carr misses this throw by. I wish that would have been addressed a bit more aggressively. I like the frequency of inaccurate passes, but the, the way they miss them I think is just a little too much. If Carr maybe misses him and the receiver can dive, maybe tip it with one hand, that's where I think kind of the window of accuracy should be. I don't think it should be that far off. I remember reading in the blogs about how there was going to be more varied accuracy, and I'm not sure I'm really seeing that right now. I have seen some good examples, but I'd like the good examples to replace, obviously, the bad ones where the accuracy is a little over-exaggerated by how far they're missing. I was hoping to see some power running here from Seattle, but Eddie Lacy really wasn't getting yards after contact or putting up much of a fight there. So, the CPU can really beat you with the passing game a lot of times but I don't think the running game is very competitive right now. 
I'm not sure if it would be better to have them break more tackles or to have more effective blocking or maybe a combination of the two. But that's something else I'll be looking at as I continue playing these games. That's a nice miss there by Mariota. I'm okay with that one. It's behind the receiver, yet it wasn't like into the third row or anything. Here's a third and 13 throw from Mariota. That was a money throw to Richard Matthews. And in this gameplay, I really enjoyed the passing game, especially when I could get Mariota on the move or if I had to evade pressure. Controlling your players is much more fluid this year, and you can really get where you want to go. And that's the case with running backs and navigating in the pocket with your quarterback. And there's a really good example of me avoiding pressure and then hitting a big throw on the move. I forget if it's in the Seahawks gameplay or in the Dolphins, but you'll know what I'm talking about. It was pretty nasty. I think it was in the rain, actually, so it had to have been the Dolphins game. As far as mobile quarterbacks go, you would like to see Russell Wilson just get outside the pocket there. There's so much chaos going on. I haven't seen the CPU really scramble to create yards. It seems they still scramble with a pass-first mentality, which can be good, but sometimes you like to see those running quarterbacks utilize their legs a bit more. Here I was backed up inside the five, couldn't get much room, and then Matt Castle misses a throw. That to me was a great possession as far as getting kind of a realistic outcome goes. Ran the ball a couple times, not much success, and then Matt Castle, a backup, misses an easy throw. Here is the Dolphins gameplay, and this is the game that I actually played start to finish. So I could look at stats and just get a full game experience, even though it's on shorter quarters than I would normally play for franchise. And we got to see Jay Cutler stretch the field and try to hit a lot of big plays. The CPU seems to really like attacking cover two this year, so be aware when you're playing cover two because they will expose your middle linebackers if they can't handle their deep drops well. And unfortunately for me, my middle linebackers were not handling that very effectively. There were some contested drops on both sides. I like seeing that. And I did feel like I was getting a pretty balanced game. Here is one of the plays where Sue just took over. It's hard to block him with just one guy and DeMarco Murray couldn't go anywhere. Then Mariota with plenty of time, finding Walker, but he can't hang on. And I'll say that for pass protection, it did seem like it was probably too strong for both sides. However, it felt balanced. So while I don't think it's perfect, it was at least even. At least it felt that way. And pressure could still be a factor. I felt like CPU coverage was pretty good. They contested throws I did not expect them to. And normally on All-Pro, I feel like I can have my way against the CPU. But there were a lot of tighter windows. Even that play right there, the ball had to be in a perfect spot. Otherwise, it would have been a very risky pass. Let me run it here. DeMarco Murray gets a big lane. That's a touchdown. But in this game, I think I averaged only three yards a carry with DeMarco. And I expected... A lot more we're not very used to the CPU really competing much on special teams but this time Damian Williams found a lane and he took advantage of it for a kick return touchdown didn't use any moves or anything so I'd maybe like to see if Cordero Patterson can put together some good returns he should probably be one of the best kick returners in the game here is Mariota out to Delaney Walker and again just can't make the catch in traffic perhaps rain playing a factor there and I like how much separation was there. He was open, but he wasn't wide open. And here's an example of cover two getting absolutely annihilated as Kenny Stills draws the attention of Avery Williamson and that frees up Leontay Carew for the easy yardage. But back to the running game, Jay Ajayi really wasn't running with much power either. Titans do have some good run defenders, but I thought it was maybe a bit too much. Here is Murray not getting a whole lot and they played pretty good team defense on that play. And then getting the rookie Corey Davis involved. Felt like the Titans passing game was very effective here on All-Pro. And the main coverage was better than I expected. But I still think that certain routes are going to be very effective. Like the C routes. Oh man, this play. This play right here. I love the blitz pickups by the running backs this year. Look at DeMarco up and the linebacker. And that gives Mariota the time to throw this pass. And while not perfect... Incompletion erased by Richard Matthews. This is one play I thought I had in the bag. Looking for Matthews again? Nope. Undercut, nearly picked by Byron Maxwell in tight man-to-man -man coverage. Oh, this is the play right here. Spinning around, avoiding pressure on the move. Got it. Richard Matthews first down. 
I feel like with the fluid controls that you're going to be able to pull off stuff like this, especially with quarterbacks who are agile and can escape the pressure. Here's another impressive play. Dolphins in man coverage again, and they actually cover the in route well. And they covered the zig fairly effectively as well. So maybe man coverage is better than I was giving it credit for in my initial gameplay reactions. Because I saw some really good plays in this game from a Dolphin secondary that doesn't have like elite talent. Now I hit a big play here, but dove and lost the football because I dove. But it's another example of exposing linebackers in zone coverage. They get their attention drawn by those underneath receivers a lot. And that frees up anything behind them that's between them and the safeties. That's where you can hit a lot of big plays. And here I get a big play from the rookie, Adoree Jackson, for a kickoff return touchdown. We both got one in this gameplay. Lots of good stuff in this video, and it was only a small hour and a half long session or so. I feel like All Pro is the best it's been and maybe simulation is helping that out and I'm really enjoying All Pro Sim. I just wish that the running game for the CPU was more of a factor but they know how to make up for it in the passing game. Check out this play by Devontae Parker as Cutler overthrows him but he handles this no problem. You see the splash effect there once he hits the ground. I want to make a video showing off all the weather and different times of day and just how the game can look under certain conditions. Might be a fun little thing to put together. We get some pressure later. Cutler can't escape. He doesn't really attempt to throw the football away. And I'd like to see the CPU AI improve for when things don't go as planned, when you can't just drop back and pass. Whether it be scrambling or getting rid of the football, I think that AI in that department has to get better. I feel like with a lot of the improved blocking that screens will be interesting this year especially with all the new jailbreak screens in the game and I like that motion swing pass out to DeMarco Murray that I ran. I saw a fair amount of injuries in this session as well and I kind of feel like it might need to be toned down for those like myself that wants kind of a simulation length game. I feel like where it's at right now default is 40 in franchise mode, 10 in play now. I think 40 might give you a few too many. But it's nice seeing them be a factor, and it's not just quarterbacks getting hurt and they're not all major injuries. That right there by J.H.I., one of the best runs that the CPU had in this entire session. Cutler still looking for big plays. He's got one here as Kenny Stills turns on the Jets. There he goes. 58-yard touchdown. Whether I played man or zone, the CPU was able to find ways to make plays, and that was great. It made the game a lot more competitive. There's Indomitian Sue once again. He was just too strong. Here's the weather playing a factor again as the receiver slips in. We're lucky that wasn't intercepted. And there was a holding call on the play, so a mess all the way around. Call a screen here. Nice to see the defender jump over the cut block attempt and make the tackle. And on this play, Jay Cutler does get outside the pocket and make a throw on the move to Devontae Parker. He was able to make pretty good throws the entire game, and you can see only nine attempts and over 200 yards on me, but a little over-aggressive here. Cutler gets intercepted by Jonathan Cyprian. Now to close out this game, the Dolphins had one last chance to try and take the lead, so they had two minutes in our territory. Check out this pass to Julius Thomas. Good throw there from Cutler. Then he tries to hit a big play toward the goal line, and it's broken up for Devontae Parker. They end up getting goal to go anyway. And then we get the pressure, and Cutler coughs it up. They back up to the 17, get it back inside the 10 for third and goal. Cutler chased again. He gets sacked. So fourth down, game on the line for the Dolphins. And Cutler finds an open man, but it's broken up on the hit by Cyprian. We end up getting the victory. But it was a close game, and it was actually quite fun. I recommend giving All Pro Simulation a shot and seeing what you think. Maybe you can tweak sliders from there and get an experience that you're looking for. I'll see what the slider guys in Operation Sports are doing, if they put together some interesting sets. As you can see here, not much on the ground for either side. Jay Cutler hit a number of big plays against me and it really shows that I would have needed to switch up my defensive play calls more than I did. Cover 3 was beat quite a bit along with uh, the poor cover 2 I was running. 
If you've tried all pro simulation in franchise mode, let me know how your games are going in the comment section and leave any feedback you have down there as well. Please subscribe to the channel, much more Madden 18 content coming your way. I'm excited to get my hands on the full release and really dive into everything there is. And I'll have my franchise reveal on the way soon. Can't wait to let you know who it's going to be this year. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.